Okay, well, today actually it kind of started out because we were watching this documentary about Las Vegas. And what was really interesting was they were talking about how the Review Journal was started. And what clued me, I was getting ready, and what clued in my ears was I heard them say, Las Vegas has always, the Review Journal has always been about promoting Las Vegas in a positive way, no matter what's going on, because they want to bring tourists no negative news, even if that goes against the news at the time. Meanwhile, the newspapers did the cheerleading. John Kalen. My brother took the attitude of don't ever sell Las Vegas short. Everybody associated with the Review Journal was interested in making Las Vegas grow. Anything favorable to Las Vegas, we set out over the wire. Anything unfavorable, we kept it right in the newspaper office. Maybe we weren't doing the news justice, but it was for the benefit of the city of Las Vegas. This is what the guy said. He said, we've always been pushing for only positive things to come out of the Review Journal, even if that's against what's going on in the news, is what he literally said. And I'm like, yeah, sounds like what happened when we were there. We witnessed that occur. Okay. Firsthand. Right. And what she's talking about is when we first moved, to, when the Jedi first moved to Las Vegas, and then what happened was there was a big shooting. And then after the, sh it was like it was like everybody was like rah 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 with the new hockey team and a new football team and new stadiums being built, all this stuff. Scams and fraud going on, but it's a lot of money flowing through, you know. So you could have a lot of scams and frauds. Then all of a sudden, this Mandalay Bay shooting occurred, and 58 people died, and like 700 people were like injured, and it was a big deal for like two weeks in Las Vegas. And then they literally were like, can we be Ooh, done with yeah, that? Let's go, let's can say, we be done with that? Yeah, let's make the can we be done, done with any talk of that? Because we don't want that negativity. We don't want anybody to hear about shootings in Las Vegas because that's the last thing we need for tourists. So can we be done with that? We did our Vegas strong. I think it was two months probably. I'll probably be you know, exaggerating with two weeks, but it was about two months. And then they literally <coughs> said, no more. They took down everything that said Vegas Strong because they had put up some Vegas Strong stuff. I think it was two months. If I Don't quote me on that, but it was a very short amount of time because you know they had had the Boston Strong and they had had the other ones. And those went on forever where they people would wear that stuff, you know, and they literally said, stop doing that. They told all of the marketing people, stop putting the Vegas Strong up. Take it off of your buildings because remember they had it up. They wanted it to be forgotten. That was the mentality, and they even removed the crosses from the Las Vegas sign and put them as far away from the strip as they could. Way in like North Las Vegas. Vegas did not want negative publicity, even though 58 people had died. Oh, you say it in a funny way. It, sometimes <laughs> you have to me. have negative publicity. It, to me, it's very funny. You know yeah. how they say no news is negative news in a sense? Because like, it's still like you're still getting publicity, but they thought, oh, a shooting, no, we don't want that. But guess what? You can switch that. You even said people will okay. go to the memorial here and come visit. Well, what I'm saying is, okay, you know how they say, like, no publicity is bad publicity? Yeah. So most people think that because you can usually, like, at least you're getting exposed and you can twist around. But they're like, <coughs> well, how do you twist a around? shooting, at, how do you twist around a shooting? So let's just stop talking about right. it. Right. Like, how do you, how do you spin... A shooting and so Vegas said well let's do the thing that Boston Strong did when they had a terrorist attack well this was not a terrorist attack this was not the same thing this was a tourist attack yeah and the thing is Vegas was so scared that their one source of income which is tourists were not gonna come and so they thought we can't remind them to be scared of Vegas with a shooting. No one feels sorry for Vegas because Vegas has been scamming tourists for 50 years. Yeah, they always feel that they got ripped off in some way, whether it be the taxis, whether it be the um, resort fees, you know, that they didn't know about, whatever the little ticky tack things that, um, the parking fees now, you know, the things that they're like, oh man, you didn't account for of your a normal allotted budget or what it showed on Expedia or something. Cause yeah. Because you get there and they're like, oh, now we're going to tack on $200 in resort fees. And you're like, what? 
and they do that kind of stuff all the time there. Right, and I heard that the Aria right now, because are charging $25 for the bottled water in the room now. Yeah, like that's things like <coughs> that. And then you're like, and you're, and you're drunk or something. That's what happens when people get wasted and they use those things in the room, whether mm-hmm. it be the snacks or the bottles of water. And yeah, and then they get charged and each thing is like a fortune, you know? Right. So, so the scam after scam. It used to be you could go to Vegas and get $1.99 steak and eggs. Well, the way they could do that was because you had one dude, and his name was usually Steve Wynn or Phil Rufkin or something like that. He owned a bar, and he owned a restaurant so he could feed his gamblers. He even owned the, 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 the rooms upstairs. So he owned the building. He owned everything. So if the gambler has lost $10,000, he's like, here, man, have, a, have some free eggs. In fact, everybody have free eggs. I just made $10,000 off this guy, and I own the eggs. I don't got to pay anybody else. What happened with Vegas is after the shooting, since they did not um, they did not acknowledge that people had died, and there's a universal kind of karma that happened, so for whatever reason, people stopped coming to Vegas. Um, primarily, probably for a minute, they did get a little scared. I mean, there was a random shooting of people at a concert. That's not <laughs> good. And then, yeah, and then they just decided to kind of just drop it. And they also had a lot of issue with even paying of the people that were, the families that were involved. I know there was a lot of right. issues there. So there was a lot of negati- Dude, God, just negative like stuff going negative on. Negative stuff. Which then, karma caused um, a downturn in Vegas. And what happened is they still wouldn't acknowledge that. The year, the year one and two after the shooting, they tried to say in all of the media platforms that it was their best numbers they'd ever had, which for one thing was kind of disrespectful anyways because... The reason why we're emphasizing this is because basically the only thing that Vegas had to spin was showing you a billboard of a bunch of cute girls at a pool in bikinis and you thought like oh yeah i want to go to that pool there's many a bunch of cute girls there that was the spin basically and then they were pushing towards the sports for more families the locals there are families so as, as three million people move in right they want the family stuff they don't right. want the hookers and the strip clubs <laughs> and the, the stuff that the tourists the want stuff that, the stuff that vegas is known for they well, literally want the dave and busters and the ikea they moved there from from california that had all that and they moved to Vegas because it was cheaper, but what, but there were things that they were missing, like their Dave and Buster's. And like we that. found out when Vegas hit 2.5 million. This is why we're talking about this. It was very strange to us. They say, "Woo!" on the news. Woo! We hit 2.5 million people. That means we get to get a Dave and Buster's and an IKEA. They'd be like, "Woo! We get a Walmart." I mean, it's like okay, but. I also didn't know that they were only in cities that have 2.5 million. I'm like, okay. And then I also didn't know what that meant after right. you get them. Right. And we, you know, when I visited Vegas, I, I, I came there with my, my, my cousins and my uncle. And we'd stay at the Venetian and you know, at the Wynn and stuff. And the people I'd see and the vibe I got was a very international feel. And when, when we lived there, when we first got there, 2013, 2014, that everybody in the, in the, you know, even at the weeklies where we were living, where there were cute girls, had people from all over, people that spoke foreign languages right downstairs from Columbia, yeah. uh, gorgeous women. I mean, yeah. every, remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, 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 there was like three women and one guy, and they were always like in their panties with the windows Oh, yeah, they didn't care. And it was just like, in everyone, and it was just such a weird vibe. We were like, we thought that's how it always was. Yeah. We thought that's what it was, and that's why we stayed there. And then what she's talking about is that after that, people started dispersing out. Right, and so what happened and, is... And once they dispersed out, we started realizing that, no, they weren't into the girls downstairs in the panties. They were... They don't like those people. They wanted the Dave and Busters in the sports team. Right. Like, the locals were happy when Vegas was less Sin City. Like, we even saw... Okay, when we first got there, we liked this um, license plate thing that had, like, a sexy girl that said Sin City. And, like, a year later, we tried to get the same... Not even a year. It was, like, six months later. We tried to get the same license plate. They had discontinued all that whole thing. They, they got the whole thing out. Forever. The whole thing. The whole They're not calling the Hell Dorado days the Hell Dorado days anymore, I heard. What are they calling it now? I Heaven days? I don't know. I, I heard something like that. Or there was a push to do that. Before the dam was built... Before the dam was built, was founded by, you know, what she's talking about this review journal. But those people were were white, conservative Christians, and Catholics that had moved there to have a very very perfect way of life, mm-hmm. kind of a utopia, 
there is no issues. Let's yeah, put it that it, way. Th- this is an interesting thing we learned. We were literally were watching a documentary on uh, Vegas. The other day. Is Boulder was originally the most uptight area. Like you had the strip kind of or whatever not really it was like whatever was down there wasn't the strip as you know it now but the people that had moved to boulder wanted nothing that the strip had they wanted everything to be uptight as could be with tons of police because there was no police down in the downtown area fremont right. is what it was not the strip it was for fremont area <coughs> at the time which was wild and not a, and so slowly <coughs> throughout the years the boulder mentality has crept all the way down and it's just taking over the people that want well, it, it, they want more police from and her, no fun right and from joy's perspective she thinks that it's creeping and, and, and that's not what happened it, it it's always been the underlying basis is this boulder mentality that yeah. because as i was saying was that you had five thousand people there and those five thousand people wanted to figure out how they figured out very quickly for them to live a really good way of life the way they lived when they had the dam being built with all the people coming there that they had to have a reason for people to come to vegas because after the dam was built you know that was pretty much the only reason but now because people were coming there to work and, and build the dam but then they said how can we do it they said well let's make the dam a tourist attraction let's let's make the the casinos a tourist let's make prostitution a tourist let's make it like the old west because they're trying to attract the people from the east coast mm-hmm. in new york city yeah. to the west and the way that they were going to do that was that they wanted to present Las Vegas as this frontier land, as a place of freedom, a place you can gamble and prostitute. But these people were very conservative by nature. They weren't into casinos. They weren't into gambling. They just wanted to do it that way. You just ruined the, you kind of ruined the no. speech here. The, what he was saying is the only, they realized very, very early on, like in the beginning of time of Las Vegas, that the only way they would survive is with tourists. From the Mandalay Bay shooting and now COVID, the t- tourists have gone down and people say, oh, the rooms are full, the rooms are full. It doesn't matter. You can put warm bodies. It doesn't mean you're getting the money that Vegas needs to run the No, business. not the way they were doing it. Yeah, because they used to get you know millions from people. They're getting pennies now. So it's not the same. It doesn't matter if you have a warm body in the room. One thing, you probably have 20 warm bodies in the room because people are packing in like sardines in one room to save money too. So you might be filled as can be, but you're not getting what you need. It's so true. It's so true. So, yeah. And the thing is, everyone thinks it's just because of COVID. And, oh, here's why we got, why we left and why we were pissed off, why we were done finally when COVID had, it was because we watched what happened with Mandalay Bay. And we witnessed how they didn't want to talk any negative thing after a certain point. It was like, you can talk about it for, I forget the time frame, but I'd say about two months. And then it was like, no more talk of it. Do not bring it up again. And then, so then we're like, okay, we noticed that. Then we had this Raider thing happen where they, uh, they messed up on the roof and we were told basically we were fake news if we talked anything negative about anything we're like okay, anything bad about seeing that's interesting okay fine well, even though it's a safety issue and everything we brought up we brought up the heat element of the workers working in 120 degree weather and stuff and at the time frame because we said why don't they work early in the morning which they eventually did but all this stuff they were like you guys are nuts get it get the heck out of here I'm like okay weird so then and this is like from the real journalists you know that review journal and stuff calling us all these names then right that's their, that's COVID their- hit Right, their tactic over there at the Review Journal was, was what you do is you go around and you smear anybody bully who says anything that goes against the the mainstream or the corporate theme. Like, don't listen to those guys. Listen to the real journalists. Mm-hmm. But the and thing is, they'll bully you too. Call you names. They'll and, call you names and get a, a group of a gang up. Like, oh yeah. Like work with the because there's you know all the trolls that gang up on people and they'll go right along with them. He's saying, so what happened is, so Mandalay Bay happened, then the Raiders thing happened, then COVID happened. So they closed the casinos and everything for 78 days, which we were like, this is insane. Like, everything was closed. And we made videos, and we were trying to, you know, promote Vegas. Still, everyone didn't want anything to do with that. Then we assume, okay, everyone's going to be realistic since we just opened after COVID, you know, like... Obviously, we had to take a hit. Obviously, things aren't going to be flying. It's going to be a little bit of a hiccup. Let's work together. Let's um, bring Vegas back. Remember, it was this thing of, like, Vegas is back, Vegas is back, pump up. And then it was 
Vegas is back. Never been better. Don't even act like we have yeah, anything yeah. wrong. And don't even act like we just went through Mandalay Bay, COVID, nothing. We are just as strong as you be. Why would you even question? How could you say anything negative? And you guys are acting like nothing is wrong. And you are entertainment. Entertainment took the biggest hit. In New York City, they haven't even brought back any of the shows. These workers, these opera singers are having to sing in the subway. Professional, amazing opera singers are having to go down in the subway because they're still out of work. And in Vegas, apparently everything is just perfect. Never been better. Resorts World was planned before the shooting. Resorts World was planned way early because they, yes. they got shut. Yeah, they, yes. they got, had a couple of delays. So they're really old delays. So their plan was to be a big nightclub. Yeah. That's why their centerpiece isn't like a fountain or 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 you know a Ferris wheel. We're, and their nightclub's not even open yet, right? So their centerpiece right. is something that's not well, even. Well, but open yet. it doesn't matter because the centerpiece is it's a hilarious. big nightclub, which, as you know, nightclubs were really cool in 2014, 2015, and the DJs. But today, today, I don't think there'd be anybody that would open a nightclub in New York City. Yet, yet. I mean, it, I'm not saying nightclubs will go away forever, but yeah, it but it's very idea. obvious. But you see, Vegas was so quick to just get people there because they have one industry, whereas everybody else could be like, "Sorry, tourism, you just have to wait." I mean, tourism, you gotta wait. You're the last to come back. Yeah, and everybody else was tourism was wait. It shows you gotta wait. It shows you gotta wait. And so now, what's happening now that everything's kind of opening up? There's, there is literally a pent-up demand to go to the shows here on Broadway because no one's seen them in a year. Right, where they opened all the shows so quick, too, in Vegas. Some of the crappy ones. Not all of them are, are back, but, like, they brought back some of the stupid stuff. Like, I think they even brought back the like, Blue Men Group. I'm not for sure on that. Oh, some geez. of the ones where you're like, I can't believe this is well, coming that, back. Well, okay. that, and then like, that's the other thing, too. You know, some of these shows I was hoping would go away because they were so bad, but no. They came back with the same plan. As right. Well, that, that's the thing, too, is that they're still working out the same plan. See, Vegas, the, the problem with Vegas also is that they don't reinvest in themselves because they keep selling the properties to new investors that then have to make money. So rather than, for example, the Blue Man show that they're showing is from 1990s. It's 20 years old. Cirque du Soleil. All those shows. Mysteri came back. was one of the shows that have come back. That show opened in 1993. O oh, was opened in 2000s. There are no new new. It, even if you open a new Cirque du Soleil, it's still a Cirque du Soleil. Yeah, like come up with a new concept for a while. Right, like when Cirque. See, Steve Wynn was a concept man. He's gone now, but Steve Wynn was. So he came up. He said, "Hey, bring Cirque du Soleil to Vegas," and then that was a hit. And then he said, "Hey, bring EDM to Vegas," and that was a hit. And now what they're doing is they're just working off the old playbook that Steve Wynn left them, which is so they're so they're. The reason why I laugh is because it's so funny to see, oh, look how good Vegas is doing. Al Giant is packed with people to see Guns N' Roses. Now, again, <laughs> it'd be cool to see... A, I didn't know all those guys were still alive. It'd know. be cool to see a stadium with that energy, but the fact is is that Guns N' Roses in, in, a, in, a, in that stadium crowd is not the same... That would be good extra on top of everything that was going on in 2014. Oh! But by itself is not enough. Our old neighbor in Vegas, wasn't he the lead singer of Guns N' Roses? You can show the little shorties how you pump and they the bomb. Not to death. I'm not impressed. I'm not amused. I'm not confused. I'm not to do. I'm a grown man business. I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin'. This is not for you. I'm a jail, my feet with the Kanye, yo. Your name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh, like, like I'm still a day yo, and it's been like that since the day yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step, Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down and lay low. The sand is shadow, 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 shadow. Open the Jedi, Black Jedi, Black Jedi. Black Jedi. Let's move. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out. Check it out. Yo. Check it out. Slim Jetta. Cast the big shadow. Cherokee red to shoot the long arrow. Got more skill, more aim, and more ammo. You can get it all from a big or small barrel like Hail Mary. Come and shoot up the place and make you pull up your face to death. I pull out the ace from the jungles of the Empire State where there ain't no escape. 
718, and that's like every night, every day. From the place that I settle and sing to the states, I'm collecting my bank. Blast off, and I'm back to the cave. Hold it down for my family straight. Represent in a family way. Football, not for amateur play. Being Ross is an amateur state before the press and the cameras raised. Like a long time out of the way, we want to stand on this trail. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Excellence. And that's what it is, you see. 